Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking about crown damage. This is not crown rot. It does have a few of the same effects, but it actually can be handled a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you exactly how it looks like. I'm gonna tell you what happened to the circuit and why it looks like this. Compare it a little bit with crown rot and of course tell you what's gonna happen next. What can you do for the orchid? And just have a little discussion about why sometimes top leaves on Phalaenopsis orchids can simply dry up. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? It is free and I post multiple times a week. But if you're feeling extra about it, do consider further supporting my channel by either visiting the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch, becoming a member or using the super thanks option down below each of my videos. Righty. So let me give you a little close up just so you see what I have here. This is a miniature Phalaenopsis orchid. It's which one is it? Oh no, it's the big lip one, the one that creates beautiful flowers which look a little bit like the Soko Vivian. Don't worry, she's gonna be fine. It's just a little bit of a setback, but as you can see, the top leaf is completely dried up. And not only that, if you look closer in the crown, there is a tiny little leaf just emerging. That one is dried up as well. Now this is different than crown rot because it was not produced by water. When dealing with crown rot, typically what happens is that you have the top leaves yellowing one by one, but by the time they completely become dry, all of the leaves pretty much are yellow. So with an active crown rot situation, you will never have one or two leaves at the top yellow and then everything else seemingly fine. Maybe I shouldn't say never, but 99.9% .9 of the cases, a crown rot infection is typically active. It goes down and more than one or two leaves are affected. And certainly they don't go crispy dry while the other leaves are completely fine, completely green. By the way, if you want to learn more about crown rot, I do have a complete tutorial, beginner friendly. I'll put it down below in the description. But how this is different than crown rot lies in the cause. Crown rot is typically produced by standing water in the crown. In cultivation, we typically grow orchids upright. Water tends to pool. The type of water we're using is not really like rainwater. We don't actually have wind in our houses. So that water tends to pool. It stays there. It doesn't really evaporate. Pathogens accumulate in that pool of water, which actually goes deep into the crown, which the crown is like a funnel. So it goes really deep into the crown, accumulates pathogens, and those pathogens start to affect the crown. And because it is so deep, typically in the case of a proper crown rod infection, the stem starts to become affected further and further down. So more and more leaves are falling. In this case, the stem is actually not affected because water is not what caused this. What caused it? Well, it's a combination. It's thrips. And I'll show you some close-ups with the thrips on the dried leaf and oils. You might already know that I prefer to use mineral oils to deal with pests in my collection. It is non-toxic and for the main part it is fairly safe, but once every 400 orchids, I do mess up, it happens. And this is how it looks like. This leaf was sprayed a little bit too much and it got suffocated. And the overspray was done only on the top leaf. Now, you might say that the other leaves are starting to get affected as well. No, that's something else. And I'll give you a close up. If you look under the leaf, you can see the pests munching on the leaves. I caught this pretty early that it doesn't really spread to others, but this particular orchid has active thrips on it. So the leaves are reacting to the thrips. The top leaf is already crispy because it was oversprayed, but the other leaves are yellowing because of the thrips. So because we actually didn't have water going down into that funnel and rotting it, all we are left with is a dried first and second leaf if we count the tiny leaf in the center. This has the same effect as crown rot because it creates a literal cap in the crown, which is dry and very hard and doesn't let fresh new leaves sprout through. The fresh new leaves are very, very tender. That's why pests really like them. They're not tough like these leaves, they're super tender. So they cannot push through this cap. And I personally cannot rip it out because I'm gonna rip the entire crown including the growth bud. So it is pretty much the same effect as crown rot minus the further infection. What to do next? 
you might ask. Well, there's nothing to do and you really don't have to do anything. In the case of crown rot, I talk about that treatment with hydrogen peroxide and cinnamon, which is meant to destroy the layers which are sick. The tissue layers in the crown have active infections in the case of crown rot and they need to be removed. You cannot really hack into the orchid because you can actually damage more than you should. The aim in crown rot is to save the bottom part of the stem. If we start to hack at it with other tools, we might do more damage than good. So what I like to do is use hydrogen peroxide, which not only kills off pathogens, but also destroys a few layers of tissue. And then I like to add cinnamon, which helps dehydrate the area and keeps it sealed. So that's why in that case I use hydrogen peroxide and cinnamon. But in this case it's absolutely not needed because the stem is fine, it just has a cap on top. So no need for treatments. Treatments will actually do more harm. The only treatment to do on the circuit right now is to take care of the thrips. And see, I oversprayed the crown area, but not too much the other leaves. I messed up, it happens. Now, just like in the case of crown rot, once the infection is stopped, the orchid will act in the same way. If the crown is impaired and new growth cannot grow from there anymore, it will produce a keiki. And in this case, it's a basal keiki because we don't have a flower spike. In some cases, if you still have a flower spike, a keiki can be produced from there. So if you see this happening to your orchid, do not cut the flower spikes, even if they don't have flowers anymore, because you might actually obtain a keiki from there. And with new keikis comes perpetuity. The orchid will continue to live on. What you need to do at some point is separate the keiki, either from the base, either from the flower spike, pot it separately, take care of it, and it will take the place of the mother plant. It will be a perfect clone of the mother plant, same flowers, same behavior, minus pest, hopefully. But until that happens, we need to take care of the mother plant because it feeds the keiki. So right now, I will do my best to remove these pests. And let's see if I can remove, no, I can't really pull on these leaves. They are young leaves. They don't even have that abscission line. The abscission line, is a line where leaves, when they dry, they can be separated seamlessly. It is a separation point, so you don't rip them off. This one is so young and didn't have time to grow that it has no abscission line. So right now I'm not gonna pull on it because I might pull something I shouldn't. I might destroy the stem further, but what I will do is take care of the pest infestation as best as possible and wait for this keiki to produce roots of its own. At that point, I can go ahead and separate it and I will make a video. But anyway, that's what will happen with the sorkid. I will keep it in the same shelf, same amount of light, same water, same fertilizer regime. There's nothing different about the sorkid other than instead of growing the crown, she's growing the keiki. Now this damage can also be mechanical and I always have comments saying that either the cat, either the person dropped the orchid on the floor and they damaged the crown. In that case what can happen is something like this, the crown creates an actual cap and the orchid cannot push the leaves through or you can have a little bit of space in between that damage for a new leaf to sprout through. As long as it is not rot, an active infection, the crown is okay. So you don't really have to do anything, you don't really have to apply anything, not even hydrogen peroxide or cinnamon. Remember that every time we put water in the crown, be it from misting or watering, be it from treatments, fungicide, insecticide, even hydrogen peroxide, which does transform to water after the reaction, we also put in the risk of crown rot. Many of the times, if you just rip the leaf, nothing bad will happen. You don't have water pulling in the crown, which is worse than ripping a leaf. So if you manage to damage physically the crown, just keep it dry and keep caring for the orchid normally. It might happen that it will continue to grow leaves from the top or create a keiki somewhere. And really, that is about it. My orchid is very, very healthy. My birds are out there singing hour, by the way. It has a lot of roots. It is very healthy. It just has a little boo-boo in the crown. What to do? It happens. So if this happens to you, you now know what to do. Alrighty, guys. 
Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for the birds. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something new. If you want to see videos for other plants and most importantly aquariums and aquarium plants, check out my second channel. It is always linked down below in the description. And for orchid tutorials, subscribe to this channel. So with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!